Hello guys, welcome back to another video and today's video we're going to be looking over Alethium. So if you haven't heard of this coin, we're going to go into kind of a deep dive into the mining, the tokenomics and the price of the coin. And hopefully you guys can learn a lot about Alethium. It's only a small coin, just want to bring more awareness to the community and, and show you guys some of the technology that Alethium uses. So let's get into it. So it describes itself firstly as Alethium is the first operational sharded L1 blockchain scaling and enhanced proof of work and UTXO concepts. Decentralization, self-sovereignty and security meets high performance, accessibility and energy efficient in a dev friendly network optimized for DeFi and smart contract applications. So that's mainly what the coin is about. We're just going to go and look at the website here, then we're going to get into the mining and then the tokenomics of the coin. So if we scroll down, we can see that the technology here is built on a novel and complete sharding algorithm called Blockflow. So if you don't know what sharding is, it's where like you build more highways, for an example, for more blocks to go through. And they actually use a DAG data structure to reach the consensus between the shards. So they're separate shards and then they are put together using DAG, which we've seen obviously with CasperCoin, DAG's a great technology and people have started to utilize it more in the cryptocurrency world because they've seen the success of Casper. But I believe Alethium was before Casper in their initial release, but DAG has been around for a while. This will allow up to 10,000 transactions per second, currently more than 400 transactions per second versus Bitcoin 7. So at current time, it can only do 400 but it should allow up to 10,000 transactions per second. Now more details on this, we can just see here how they actually divide it into shards. And then if we scroll down, we can see how the DAG is actually put together here, where there's multiple blocks and they're just DAGged together, if that makes sense. Normally with a DAG, it's just blocks sporadically, but this is the DAGs reaching out to each kind of lane, I would say. And this is what Alethium uses to actually get their transactions per second up and be scalable in the future. Now, when it comes to energy consumption, and I can attest to this, this is a very efficient algorithm to mine on. Normally when I'm mining on certain GPUs, they take up a lot of power, like Ravencoin takes up a huge amount of power draw on GPUs. However, you can use around 40% less power on the Alethium network, and they call it the proof of less work, so obviously less work done by your GPUs, but with the same result, which combines physical work and coin economics to dynamically adjust the work required to mine new blocks. Given the same network conditions, Alethium uses 90% less energy compared to Bitcoin. And then we go down, it has programmable and secure, so Alethium introduces the stateful UTXO model, offering layer one scalability and the same level of programmability as the account model used on ETH. And then lastly, it talks about smart contracts and how this has already got smart contract implementation. So if you want to build on this network, you can very easily and build your own smart contracts. So here are some numbers here. If we actually click on the Alethium Explorer, we can see this more in detail. So the transactions right now total is 15 million. The hash rate is at 64 terahash. The supply is at 43 million with 180 million being the max supply. And the blocks are at 12 million and average block time is one minute, four seconds. So 64 seconds for average block time of all shards, it says there. So one thing that I wanna note about Alethium is they really do well in UI design. Obviously this interface is very sleek and stuff like that. And we can see that in the wallet as well, which we'll look into before we start actually setting up a miner file. So let's look at the wallet. If we click on get wallet here, it's gonna scroll us all the way down. There's three different types of wallet. So you can get extension for your browser, which just came out. You can get the desktop wallet, which is the normal one, which we're going to show you, and then a mobile wallet. They're all kind of variations of the desktop wallet. So if you just click on desktop wallet, it's going to direct you over to a GitHub, and then you just select which one you want for your operating system. Now on Windows, the actual wallet looks like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in my passwords, and then I'll show you. So here we have the wallet right here. So it's basically like a Bitcoin Core wallet, just looks nicer. As I said, the UI design is very good for Alethium because they keep everything the same. Like even the wallet looks like the web page, and the obviously other wallets will look like the web page as well. So here we have just like your value here, the available sending and receiving here settings. So you can do like test nets and stuff like that. If we go to network, you can click on test nets, local hosts, customs. So that would be for, I believe, adding tokens. 
As we can see here, there's not just going to be a lithium here. You could add tokens into the wallet as well. And then NFTs is coming soon. So there will be NFT integration into this wallet. It just shows latest transactions here. And that's pretty much it for the wallet. If you want to get your wallet address, it's at the top here. Now, if you want to make more, you click on addresses and you just add new address. You can add contacts as well. And that's pretty much it. As I said, it's like a Bitcoin Core wallet, just they updated the UI, made it look a little more sleek. And, and this green line here, you can see your price of your coins as they go up uh, by day or however long you've had the coin in the wallet. So when it comes to mining, this is our wallet address here. So I'm just letting you know if you want to start mining it, I'm going to be running through how to do that now. So you probably need to download one of the wallets and get a mining address from there. So once we have our mining address, we can actually go over to mining pool stats and look for a mining pool. So here we have a choice of mining pools here. Hero Miners, Wooly Pooly, Solo Pool, Coin Hunter Space, Alephian Pool. Various different minimum payouts, various different pool fees. I'm just going to go with Hero Miners today because that's probably what most of you will be mining to because they have the most hash rate. But remember, we don't want a 51% attack. So share out the hash rate and use a different pool if you have the means to. Like say you're trying to solo mine, use a different pool and spread the hash rate around a little bit. If we click on hero miners here, we can just see we have the start, we have all of the ports and the stratums here. If we scroll down, we can see I've already got my address there. So I mined it like for, I don't know, a day or so. And we just got one alethium. That's what you saw in the actual address. But if you want to start, you click on start at the top here, you scroll down and it should give you all of these batch file texts for these different miners. So you've got five selections here. Today, we're going to be using BZ miner. Now, all of these will be linked in the description below if you guys want to click around and see the sources of where I've got these. But here you can just click on BZ Miner, download the latest version. So if you scroll down to here, you download the Windows. And once you unzip it, it's going to give you this folder here. Now, I've already got my Alephium batch file set up. But what you want to do is you want to go back here. You want to copy this text. So we just copy all of that. Go back. We click on this Alephium, we right click it, we click edit, and then it's going to give us this. So what we do want to do is actually copy and paste over this. Now it's going to say your wallet address and the stratum. So the stratum is already set up for Europe on default, but the other stratums that you want to use are up here. So whichever one's closest to you, you use that one. And then our wallet address, obviously, we can go back to our Alephium wallet that we downloaded, copy the address go back in here and paste it over this address here. Now I'm going to disable one of my GPUs real quick. So I can show you what I'm mining and you know how efficient the actual network is. So I'm going to close this and click save, open up that file again that we saw. So this is the Alephium file. Now I'm going to have to turn on the fans a little bit here just so my graphics card doesn't overheat so I can show you the mining. So here we have Alephium starting up the miner. We can see here that it's disabled the fifth GPU. So this is the one that I'm actually recording on. So it doesn't ruin the recording. And we can see the dev fee is 0.5%. And I believe the pool fee for hero miners is 0.9%. So as you can see here, this uh, EVGA 1080 Ti is just mining. Probably find a share in a couple of seconds. So there we've got a share on the network and that's at 213 watts. However, we can take this really far down. I believe we can take it down to 65 and we could still get a decent hash rate. So if you click apply there, we can take it down to 65. What we're looking at right now, 622 with the miner. So there we can see we're at 155 watts. And remember we were at or 212 and we're getting the same amount of hash rate. So you can see that how efficient it is. You can basically take your power down a lot on this actual algorithm, I believe it's Blake 3. You can take your power down a lot and you can still get the same amount of hash rate. As we can see here, 130 watts even, making it way more efficient. So this is their proof of less work. I'm just showing you that it is very efficient. And, and this is why Alephium normally is dual mined with other coins because of the efficiency of the network. So we're just gonna shut this down and turn off the fans and we'll get back into the Alephium video. So when it comes to the Alephium network, as we can see here, We've got a network hash rate of 60 terahash, a block reward of 2.73 alephium, a block time of four seconds, and the daily emissions is around $12,000 per day. Right here, we have the price. We're gonna have a little look at that later on. So I'm not gonna touch on that. 
But for the most part, this block time, I believe, is actually 64 seconds, but because of the sharding, it's not shown, I think. Or maybe hash rate NO has got that wrong, at least put it as four seconds. However, if we're looking at overclocks for Alethea mining, we can look at benchmarks here. So this displays basically most GPUs that you would have. And down here, let's just find the 1080 Ti. So the 1080 Ti overclocked is 0.88 giga hash. And I was working with 0.66, but I've got all of this running. So that interferes with it a little bit. But for the most part, the 40 series is going to take the top, you know, 6.51 giga hash. And if you want overclocks, you click on any of your GPUs and it's going to show them here. So overclock settings, core clock, the memory clock, and the power limit. If you want to have it in your minor file, you can just copy and paste this and add it back into your minor file at the end. And they also have high overclocks and medium overclocks. So if you're not really running the most out of your GPUs, you can go for the medium overclock. Uh, but if you're going for basically hash rate, then you go for the high overclock. So as I said, for hash rate, it's over here. So if you want to increase hash rate to the most you can, these are the overclocks here. And then for the efficiency, you can see which card is the most efficient. Looking at the AMD cards are actually taking the highest efficiency right here, the 6000 series from them. A couple of other cards, the 3090 Ti is doing really well. I know it's a powerful card, which is actually beating out the 4070 Ti. Now, one of the main things that I do want to talk about when it comes to Alethium is they actually had a sort of pre-mine or pre-allocation here. I know that this is not standard and we don't really like it in the proof of work space. And we're going to see why in a minute. For the most part, the token supply on the lithium is limited to a hard cap of 1 billion at mainnet launch. An initial supply of 140 million was mined with the Genesis block. The remaining supply of lithium tokens will be mined over the next 80 years. Of these 140 million tokens, 80 million was pre-sales, 30 million was community, 30 million was treasury and team, and the 860 million was mine and rewards. So there's obviously pre-mines for a lot of these. And then I don't know where they're taking the 860 million because we haven't actually seen any of that come through the stats or statistics. As we can see here, the total supply is 180 million, but the max supply is 1 billion. Now, it's weird with the mining rewards and the emission schedule. There's a lot of information that I couldn't really find out there. This coin is very small, as we can see here, with 8.5 million in market cap, so extremely small. So the information out there is not exactly accurate for a lot of these things. However, I've tried my best to actually look into it. So when it comes to block reward, we are looking at some sort of curve that coincides with the mining of the coin if that makes sense, like the hash rate of the coin. So it doesn't necessarily follow just an emission schedule straight up. It depends on how much hash rate is on the network. As it says here, the mining rewards increase gradually from zero alethium to 60. When the hash rate of the network is zero hashes per second to one petahash per second range. Then with a minimum of 30 alethium guaranteed, the idea is to incentivize more miners to join the project without benefiting the early developers. So a lot of people that mined it at the start would probably have a lot of these coins. And we can see that in the price as well. If we look on the all time chart, there's a massive dump off of the coins. When we go back here, the next is the hash rate within one petahash per second to one equahash per second. The reward gradually decreases from 60 down to 20 per block. And then within one equahash to 128, the reward gradually decreases from 20 to zero lithium. Now, right now, as I said, the block reward, if we go back here, is actually 2.73 alethium. So we're quite far on this emission schedule, as it says here, the block reward decreases from 20 to zero. So a lot of this mining has already been done, if I'm not mistaken, which means that we're kind of on the tail end of mining and it's going to be a couple of years of just like really low block rewards. But the people that got into mining first alethium they would have reaped the rewards of that now. And secondly, the inflation rates are estimations as the block time is a variant dynamic on a real network. When the hash rate surpasses one echo hash per second, proof of less work will be triggered. So it wasn't actually on the network yet until that echo hash was actually crossed and then proof of less work came in. And this is why we're seeing it so efficient. 
I'd never mined it when it was not proof of less work, so I don't know what the mining was like on that, because that was about a year ago. But I'm sure that there's information on the internet out there of people mining it when it went live. And then lastly, the transaction fees are a way for the network participants to incentivize miners to process their transactions faster. In the Alephium blockchain, all transaction fees are burnt to keep the mining incentives equally distributed between all chains. So this is what it kind of looks like on a token release schedule. So the transaction fees are burned with each block. When triggered, Alephium's proof of less work internalizes part of the mining costs through the upfront burning of Alephium. So we're in the proof of less work phase right now. And this is how the tokens will be released as I showed here. It's over a three year period. So this is two to four years. This is four years, three years, and then this is over the next eight years. So this is the release of Q1, Q2, Q3. So this is the first year, second year, third year, and then this is the fourth year here. So it's just gonna kind of bottom out at that point. However, the token supply obviously from 0% up to 22.1 maybe, or 22.5 probably. So that's the token release of the coin. Now there are rewards obviously, as a lot of projects will offer for developers. And you can find the community reward program here. I'll leave it linked in the description as well, if you're a developer. So you can apply for grants to support the development and growth of the Alephium ecosystem, which basically means like DeFi apps and NFT platforms. As we saw in the wallet, I'm not going to type it in again, but there was NFT integration there. So we've gone over mining and tokenomics of the coin. In the main part, we want to actually look at the price of the coin. So this is obviously the start that we have recorded of the price. Now, this was probably dumped from people that got their coins from mining previously, or people that had it not locked up, or they got given the coins. So we see this with pre-allocations and stuff like that, that it's not very good to have pre-allocations because things like this happen. And the emission schedule on the coin was very, very quick at the start because of this Equihash to Petahash increase. So this is why we're seeing this drop off here because people just sold all their coins as soon as they got them. And then we're kind of bottoming out at 0 0.06 to 0 0.08 for a, quite a while here. There's a little bump there. That was in the 2022. And then we've had a little increase here. And this is kind of where I started seeing the mining of it go up a little bit because the market cap goes up then and you know it becomes profitable to dual mine it with certain coins. Then we've had a little drop off. This was from highs of you know Bitcoin going up to 30K and stuff like that. And then we've come down and we're creeping up a little bit there. So the price of this coin, I'm not too sure on the actual price in the future. Overall, it's down 86% in a year, kind of around a year, I believe. Yeah, it's a year and a half now that this coin has been kind of listed on coin market cap. And the fully diluted market cap right now is 200 million. So really small coin when you actually think about it. And when we scroll down, we can actually trade it on Gate.io, Bitmart, TXBit, and Trade Ogre. We kind of seen this same thing happen with Ironfish. I just want to show you that quickly with the price of Ironfish. When it came out, people probably dumped because they had that testnet mine and they got coins from that. They dumped it and then since then, Ironfish has kind of been on a down, but it's still become profitable on FPGAs. So if you want to mine it on an FPGA, it's pretty profitable. But you know, Ironfish didn't really hold its price very well and neither did Alephium from, you know, $1.20. So we're looking at a 5x from what the price is now, all the way down to 20 cents. Anyway, so that was just an introduction into Alephium. I know that there's not a lot of information actually out there about the block rewards and stuff like that. Some websites say this, some websites say another thing. It's really confusing. And, you know, one of my main disagreements that I have with it is obviously the pre-allocation of coins. We don't like that as, you know, it allows for people to be bad actors in the space and sell off their coins when they get it. This should all be either crowdfunded from the community, from miners and stuff like that in the Discord. As I said, a very small coin, but very efficient algorithm. And this is why it's very profitable. For the most part, that's my video on Alephium. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment if I got anything wrong. I know that I probably have, but there's a lot of information that is incorrect out there on the internet. And if I have got anything wrong, leave it in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video.